Kia ora, Robert McLaughlin here. Welcome to week 9 of 16204 Differential Equations 1. First lecture of the week. It's called Matrix Exponential. Even if you've studied matrices in 16102, this is very likely a new concept for you. We've already seen how to solve uh, linear systems in general, so what this will be used for is another way of representing the solution to a linear system. First, let's just do a scalar differential equation. So x is just a real variable, and we have dx dt equals a constant times x, dx dt equals ax. And suppose we had an initial condition, x at time 0 is some number x 0. No, we know how to solve that. The solution is going to be x of t is e to the t a times x naught. Very convenient formula for the solution involving the exponential. And the question is, can we do something similar for a linear system? And it has to involve that matrix A. So can we get a formula for the solution of an arbitrary linear system where vector x at time 0 is some constant vector x0? And maybe, just based on what we have up there, it should look something like this. e to the t a times x0. So if uh, well if a is a matrix an n by n matrix t times a would be an n by n matrix so then I'd have to go e to the power of a matrix presumably getting an n by n matrix and then I'd multiply it by the vector and I want that to give me to give me the solution so the question is does this even make sense how would you define that so that uh, it would give you the solution of the differential equation well to do that I'll have to go back a step and look at what the ordinary real exponential is. How do you express that in terms of simpler functions? And the way to do that is with the Taylor series. So this is a revision now from perhaps from uh, 16101 calculus. And the real exponential, where x is just a real variable, can be expanded in this Taylor series. 1 plus x plus half x squared plus 1 over 6 x cubed plus 1 over 24x4, plus 1 over 120x5, plus dot, dot, dot. Here is a formula using the sum notation for all the terms. And the point is that if you sum the series out to infinity, in other words, to take its limit as the number of terms tends to infinity, this will in fact converge for all x. And it converges to e to the x. So this is a way of defining e to the x only using more elementary functions, namely um, powers of x and addition. And here's a nice diagram that shows how that works. The blue curve is the function e to the x, a graph of y equals e to the x. 1 plus x is the linear approximation, that's the first term in the Taylor series. That's pretty good down here when x is very small. 1 plus x plus a half x squared is the quadratic approximation. That works for a larger range of x. The purple one there is the cubic approximation. They're getting closer and closer. And if you add in more and more terms, you'll get a better and better approximation for more and more values of x. And for any fixed x, as you add more and more terms, you will converge to what you want. So this suggests just defining using this formula to define the matrix exponential. And that is, in fact, what we want to do. e to the a is not one, but identity matrix, plus a, plus a half a squared, where that is now a times a, matrix multiplication, plus one over six a cubed, exactly the same formula. So that is the sum from n equals zero to infinity, of one over n factorial times a to the n. And you can prove that for any matrix a, this infinite sum will converge, and the thing it converges to we call that e to the a. Well, that would mean e to the ta would have to be i plus ta plus a half ta squared, which is t squared a squared, t cubed a cubed, and so on. So now I get the matrix exponential where it depends on t, which means I could differentiate that with respect to t and I would get, well, the derivative of i with respect to t would be 0. It doesn't depend on i. It would have to be a. The derivative of a half t squared is t. 
the derivative of 1 6 t cubed is a half t squared and you look at that and you see that that is in fact equal to a times i plus t a plus a half t squared a squared plus dot 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 I'm just getting the formula for the exponential again in other words that is a times e to the t a just using that first line there the definition well that means d d t of e to the t a x naught would be a times e to the t a x naught that would be a times x so I'm done. I've proved that this matrix formula using this matrix exponential gives me the solution of the linear system. So it's a good news, bad news story, as so often happens in mathematics. I get a nice simple formula for the solution defined in terms of elementary functions, just matrix powers. But I get less insight into the solution by itself. I need to know something more about this matrix exponential to know how those solutions are really behaving. But still, it is nice to have a formula for the solution. Now, how would you actually calculate this? Well, in MATLAB, you, that is a built-in function. This is a standard function of a matrix. You just type EXPM for matrix exponential. So very easy to compute. More generally, what you would have to do, or how that would be calculated inside, would be to diagonalize the matrix. So if A is diagonalizable, so it's, if it's equal to some matrix V, which would be the matrix of eigenvectors, times the diagonal matrix, times the inverse of V, then E to the T A would be E to the T V D V inverse, which would be equal to I plus T V D V inverse plus a half t squared v d v inverse v d v inverse plus dot 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 and now there's a great simplification that takes place because in these matrix powers here all the interior v inverse v's cancel out v inverse v is the identity matrix and you get that this is equal to v times e to the td times v inverse. So to compute a matrix exponential, if you can diagonalize it, it reduces to computing the exponential of a diagonal matrix. And that, as you can check, is very easy. Just write it down for the 2 by 2 case. That is just e to the a, 0, 0, e to the b. So the matrix exponential of a diagonal matrix is just the ordinary exponential of its elements. But for a more complicated matrix, you have to actually diagonalize the matrix in order to use that.